Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Strategic Command World War One, episode number 18. I don't think there's anything I actually need to do, um, even having reviewed the comments from last video, um, before we end the turn. We just gotta have to hope that we hold on in a few precarious places along the Ottoman fronts, but we're expecting capitulation of the Serbians, and yeah, and that's a good thing. So, let's end the turn. Also, we have that one unit we hope doesn't die. <laughs> okay, Serbian morale decreases, Serbia surrenders. Germany plunders 205. Oh, that's right, Bulgaria took the capital, so... Montenegro surrenders, and Austria-Hungary plunders 105. That's good. So at least Austria-Hungary got something. Kitchener's new army deploy for service. All the lines of reinforcement to Serbia are cut. JP Morgan Jr. is shot and wounded after a bomb explodes. German agent Eric Munter is arrested for the bombing and shooting. So we were very close to, and now we have developed infantry weapons one. Production technology one, I think this was at 99%. I don't remember what the other one was at. Command and control development has gotten a breakthrough by the Austro-Hungarians. And that's it. That's a little surprising to me. I expected one or two more. I'll have to go look at that. <laughs> we might have gotten a little bit unlucky on just a couple of, or at least like not, we didn't get lucky <laughs> with a couple of resource uh, research rolls. Anyway, this is the important thing. Now we see how the battles go. Do we hold in Italy? Do we hold with that one German unit, which is overextended? And then all along the Ottoman front, we're going to have issues. I'm seeing retreat over in France, which makes sense. So maybe that really aggressive unit is going to be okay. Yep, they just reinforced. I think we're going to be okay. Now, Gaza is also in kind of a precarious place. And of course, we should be asking, what about the Warsaw? Ooh. Well, 1 7 is pretty good. About what we'd expect for Dreadnought, Dread, Dreadnought Destroyer Battle. Unless, of course, you're playing Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, in which case, you never know what you'd get. <laughs> so they might be trying to attack Gaza here. They did move forward and take Van as expected. That was a 1-3, or 3-1, it was terrible. 2-1-2, uh, oh god, 2-1. That was really terrible, that, that was not good. Okay, a 0-2, that's quite good. That's a detachment, I don't know what they're thinking doing an attack with a detachment. That detachment's probably dead. And this is Italy expanding along their border. They're moving east, so we'll need to strengthen the eastern side. And I'm seeing a lot of Russian troops along the Ottoman border. Even cavalry showing up now, that's concerning. Yeah, this pocket, I started to think about it, talk about it a little. I was trying to talk about it earlier in this turn resolution, but that's a lot of units. Oh, that's actually it. Okay, so Russia didn't do anything to try to get their forces back. Okay, loss of Serbia has hurt both the Russians and the French, but helps the Austro-Hungarians. And Germany, with their super high morale, doesn't need it to impact them. They just celebrate it. So the, they've moved the Entente 
I mean, Portugal 4% towards the Entente. We disrupted Libya, Italy, and then the usual blockade stuff. Now, the blockade stuff actually makes no sense at all at this point because we have France. <laughs> we can have convoys delivered to Brest, which this game apparently does not take into account, which is a huge, huge mistake. But, I don't know, say la vie, I guess. 16 points for the Italian convoys, that's good. Okay, that's actually a really good intelligence report. It has come to our attention that General Wille, Commander-in-Chief of the Swiss Armed Forces, is planning to ask the Swiss Federal Council to enter the war on our side. Would you like to spend 75 points to employ agents to encourage support for General Wille or Wille's moves to have Switzerland join the Central Powers? Now, first of all, I don't really care if Switzerland joins. It might be a good thing in a way that it opens more frontage against the Italians. I mean, they can keep things as small as one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so they can keep things down to five hexes. Five hexes might be enough for me to do something with, though. Five hexes, one, four, five, six. It was, it was only six hexes in the middle between Luxembourg and, um, Switz uh, and Switzerland originally. So one less is not bad considering we don't expect the Italian army to be anywhere near the size of the French and they're already gonna be on a two front war by the time we get down here. So what does it benefit us? We gain a few units. I suppose that those units are gonna be, I think, um, German controlled. So that means that they can benefit from the German... Well, can the Bulgarians benefit from the... No, Bulgarians cannot benefit from the... No, yeah, they can. Okay, so Swiss will be able to benefit from the German upgrades. I don't know. I don't think it's worth it, but we also have 900 points. One thing I'd like to know, can I view the map? Will it let me view diplomacy? No. I'd like to know how far away they are. That's actually the most important thing, but we'll just say yes. Oh, and it looks like that detachment we bought for the Austro-Hungarians is ready. I'm going to keep this in my back pocket for now. I'm not going to deploy it yet, but I think I'm going to end up deploying it right here. We do have a pretty big gap in the lines there. Um, entrenchment of three, entrenchment of three, entrenchment of two of three. Okay, well, the one that's entrenchment of two of three is also in the mountains. It's going to be really hard for them to move around at all. Although I suspect that they're going to be pretty... Yeah, this is supply of seven. Supply of seven. So this is a supply of eight then, Udin. And it's passing on supply of seven to all of its neighbors. We're in a similar spot until we get an HQ here. Okay, anyways, let's do a quick scan across the front, my usual state of the union. France, I mean, look how close we are to Bordeaux. We can actually get to neighbor, we can neighbor Bordeaux this very turn. In fact, I know I'm almost sure that this cavalry is going to be used to push forward and hopefully attack this. Um, I'm, so, I'm so like convinced that this is what I want to do and I'm just going to start doing it. Okay, 0-5 ended up being a 1-4. I, I, I strongly disagree with that, but, <laughs> but fine. If you're going to play that way game, fine. Um, not a good not a good way to start off your turn. Still, we're very close. In fact, I don't know if Bordeaux has anything. One, two. That music scared me, but I think we're in vision range. One, two, three. And we're not seeing anything, which means they may not even be defending their capital. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, I think there might be a hide point. No, stop it. Don't click on that, Tortuga. The music. No, oh, copyright strike coming. <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, anyway, what else? Tour is going down. 
Um, Bourges is probably not going to fall this turn because we don't have anything. But hey, this unit survived. He can move into Vichy. It can move back. We'll have to see. Supply-wise, it's going to be a 4 if it goes to Vichy. It has 3 action points. and For some reason, it's going to take all 3 to get into Vichy. I don't understand why that is. It should be... One movement point and one extra one because of zone of control. Now that still would not have enough movement points with only three, considering it's so low on supply, it only got three action points. It still wouldn't have enough to move back up here. But I'm not sure it's worth taking Vichy if this guy's going to be cut off on supply. I'll have to like, we'll actually, we will have to step away and I'll do my usual pause to think about that. Um, oh, research. That's right. I wanted to look and see how close we were on research for some of these things. I, so we got production, we got infantry weapons, those were both expected, and we'll probably up production again. Um, yeah, we did not get industrial technology, this is the other one I was expecting to get. Um, we're 4% short, so we must have rolled the lowest possible number, because I, I, in my head, I, we were like... 93 or something. I was expecting this one to finish, or hoping it would, so I don't remember exactly what it was at. I'll have to go back and look. And yeah, nothing happened. No breakthroughs or anything for the Ottomans. That's okay, though. I'm, I, we're in a decent enough shape that as long as we don't have dice rolls like this, a zero 0.5 becoming a 1.4, we should be okay. <laughs> Uh, we've obviously done a lot of the hard work already to get ourselves into this really good position where France is just falling apart. We're not, I mean, we're getting so close to the capital, and once that falls, who knows? Let me, before we cut away, let's just see. UK is already down to 70%. That's pretty bad. France is at 28%. Italy 99, Serbia surrendered. Russia's down to 54%. Germany's at 134, and the Austro-Hungarians are at 118. Only the uh, Ottomans trailing at 91, but not bad. So let's just, again, quick scan of the front, my initial impressions, the State of the Union. Um, Russia did not attack, did not move forward, did not do anything last turn, and now they remain cut off. So what happened with their supply? Lublin is at a 5. But Warsaw is down to zero. Is that because I attacked it? I don't remember why it would be at a zero. But that means the supply in this area is just atrocious. This guy's at a five. This guy's at a three. Oh, lordy. This guy's at three, four, four, three. If my detachments are going one-to-one -one with them, that's a... Great sign for us. One to three, yeah. So we are looking in very, very good shape to eliminate this pocket with its one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven units. Eleven division. I mean, with eleven cores gone from the Russian army, this is pretty much curtains. And with this upcoming Entente play by email multiplayer series against Agrippa Maxenius. We may see this series, I know this will be a little bit unfortunate, but this one may end up getting cut short. Not yet, I want to at least get to 1916. So that's a lot of turns left, actually. I'm not sure if I will get there. It's only 1915. The war only, hasn't even been a year in the war. and we're, we're on the verge of victory, which is what a lot of the experts were predicting in the actual World War One. They didn't expect it would last so long. Um, this side of things, what do you think? You think probably stalemate? Um, we do want to maneuver. I want to push this HQ probably over here. Oh, yeah. In fact, I want to start here before I do anything. Yeah, this is... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to go well for us. Um, okay, let's just let's just do it. Okay, a 2-4 ended up being 1-3. We actually do want the higher death counts even on, on our own. Because we're dealing with... Oh, wow. Okay, there it is. And that's completely eliminated. Will not be participating <laughs> in the rest of the war. And I guess we just move this guy back here. And what's 
really great is we have the opportunity to reinforce this unit, which I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna do a few of these things. The Ottomans have enough points. So that's the first thing done. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is the usual cut away and um, I'm gonna plan the French situation. And I think most of the planning is gonna come down to supply at this point. The real difficulty, the real challenge is Paris, Cane, Auxerre. These are like the last supply points of six of over six. I mean, uh, Wolhausen's all the way back in German territory, and it it might be what we end up having to use to get supply into like all the way to Lyon. So unless we can get these cities, I mean, there's there's a couple options. Obviously, if we want to just take things slow, not definitely not what I want to do. But if we want to take things slow, we could just wait for these cities to recover. I mean, the ones in red, like Orléans. Le Mans, Le Mans, uh, Nantes is full, but Tour, I'm sure that it would be higher than two. We have Bourges, uh, which if we took that, I don't know how much damage we're going to inflict taking it, but if we were to take it um, and let it recover, it'll be back up to eight. And that's really going to push supply south. We're kind of stuck, I mean, in a sub, like we have to let supply catch up to us. So there's a lot of little game mechanics, which are pretty cool. The fact that the city's only recovered by one a turn. It adds. It actually adds this really cool dynamic where we're racing ahead of our supplies because the supply lines are not. We need the supply lines behind us to form, and that takes the form of cities being rebuilt. So, yeah, we're kind of stuck in some places. I mean, you can see the supply is really bad down here. This unit obviously overextended, but in fact, this cavalry is really, really, really overextended. But it can also move back, so if we need, I uh, probably will end up moving that back then. Maybe even two spots back to where it was? No, no, no. Supply should be better as soon as we... Dare I do that? No, I think I want to move... So this cavalry can just kill that unit. Hooray! And now if I do an attack here this one in and we can actually do a swap so this five is going to move forward but i'm also just going to reinforce it uh and then we oh, by the way i mean just in case you're wondering what this new green zero is i don't know if i already mentioned this sorry talked about it but this is now my upgrades so it's gonna be 23 and when i do upgrade it's gonna take well i guess i should just pick a unit and upgrade and show you but it's gonna do as i said it's gonna increase the uh the 5-4 attack and 4-3, sorry, attack defense for soft is 5-4, and then for hard it's 4-3. It's going to increase all those numbers by 1, so 6-5, 5-4. Very, very good, obviously. So what does supply look like now? Still not any better. That's because Tours hasn't fallen yet. Yeesh. Okay, we can borrow you. Um, you can get here. You do this. So what is Tours at now? A one. Yikes. That's not going to help. But did it help Supply get any further? No. <laughs> did not help our Supply Lanes. I thought it might. Nine, eight, seven, six. Yeah, seven and seven, so it didn't help. Six, five, four, three. So where can you go? You can go here to be in supply of four, but that's still not ideal. Yeah, we'll have to, I'm gonna have to, when I cut away, I still haven't, have I even cut away yet? I don't think so. I'm gonna have to look at how, how to get supply around. Nantes at a five here, that's just not enough. But even if this guy, he can't reach there, he can only go three. He can get here, which put him at a four which means he'd be using a supply of seven, I think. Five is an eight, so I think four is a seven. And right now it's at a seven as is. Yikes. So if he was here, yeah, I really don't know how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna have to just like really think about how to get supply forward. 
Um, we can chain supply. By the way, I'm so strange. I, I, have not, I have not even tried to manage my HQs for the last few turns. I just got, got to be too much work. Oh yeah, we can at least upgrade. We'll, we'll probably reinforce this one. We don't need to upgrade the cavalry yet. This one's priority should be getting the morale up, which means we need the strength over, uh, over six, seven or above. So we'll probably do this. I mean, we have points to spare, so when I see an opportunity like that, I don't think I need to wait. I can just instantly do it. One, five, two, three. Let's uh, let me cut away and I'll figure out what I want to do. Okay, well I've overthought things to death, but there's just really no solution to the supply situation. I can move this unit forward. Um, if I just show you the math, if I move this unit forward here, it's uh, nine, eight, seven, six. So that six will be bumped up to a ten. Ten will be nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. So that means if I want. I just need to move this unit back one. Now, um, it should be in supply here, at least out of five, which is the minimum I want. I want a minimum of five. Just need to move this unit here. Now, in order to do that, I ought to just somehow defend this poor unit. And the only way we can do that is if this one moves here. So this is gonna be a one to three, but this is a one to five. So I think I'm gonna take both attacks. That ended up being a 2-6. I'm okay with that. That's not terrible. We'll take the 1-3 as well, which ended up being a 1-4, I think. So th that's good. Um, this is essentially going to be my new radius of supply. If we check it here, it's now going to be a 5. Hooray! Now, this is still going to be a 4. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out a way to save this unit from being in supply of 4. But I, think, I still think taking Vichy is worth it, so we'll take it. And... It has a two supply, damn it. Well, that's not what I wanted. Unfortunately, it took all three of his depleted, lowered, lower than usual three action points total for this turn to move in there. I don't know why. Moving into a town should only have costed one and then one extra for the action point. And then he had one less action point because he was low supply, but I don't know where the th the, there's one mission that, missing action point of the four still. Like, why did it take three to move into that? I really, really can't tell you. Really don't know. So this um this is a really difficult to attack. Two to three, two to three, two to four. We have a one to three here against Dijon is slightly better. I probably will end up taking that. But we have a one to five here, and it's against the Italians, who are our new biggest threat. So we're gonna go ahead and take that. And end up being a one to six. I don't remember what this was at before. Let's double check our supply. This will be a five. I think we'll do it. Just to just kind of buffer this poor. We can actually, I think we will do it. We'll swap these two to get him a little bit further out. Now we wanna move this guy in. Kill him, kill it, kill it. We did, we did kill him. That's fantastic. Well, let's take this one to four now. In fact, what we want to do is, I know, that I think this will get intercepted, but we're going to do it anyway. This is at 40% morale, 71% readiness. Apply this attack. No interceptors. And what did it do? 39%, still 70% readiness. It only lowered it by 1%. Well, that's not amazing. I probably should have just given this guy strength, repaired him for the turn. Um, okay, well, oh, there it goes, one to four. Yeah, we have a lot of units. We're going to be able to take Jijan this turn. Okay, one to three instead of a one to four. There's the one to four, true to what it stated. Okay, we can take Jijan. I'm going to leave that there for a second. Um, this is a two to six, which is just too good to pass up. Ended up being a two to six. And now we can cut this unit off. Now, what is supply looking like if we do this? Oh. So we're actually gonna get our supply all the way from German territory. This is tr truly remarkable. I guess we can just advance here. Put more pressure on them? Is it does it matter? 
Seven, seven. This is a seven and this is a six, but seven, it's not that bad. I think I'll take it. Here's a one to five. Yeah, we'll take that. And we can move in and move down. Undo. Move through this way. Some of the other person can move in, I guess. I'm so glad that somebody else actually can move in. Um, let's move this one in. Okay, so you're completely surrounded, cut off, and you are out of supply. So what does that mean for supply now? Does it help? Are we up to a five yet? No, still out of four, but it's now our seven which is being affected, not our five, so we're pretty confident that unit is not going to run into any problems. Um, we don't really need to attack this unit, I just want to keep it pinned. But that was a pretty, success pretty successful turn. I do want to upgrade these two. I know we got to operate some people out of here eventually. Now, I thought of a really, really, really convoluted way of doing this. Let's see if this works. Can we still upgrade you? No. Um, it didn't really matter that I, if I had done this the way I just did it or not. I wanted this guy to be upgraded, but I don't know if I told you this already. I'm kind of going in circles, but you cannot be in the enemy zone of control to be upgraded. So I needed to get this unit out of the zone of control for done, but if I move him, I can't upgrade him either. Now there's this one tricky situation where if you swap units, swapping somehow does not count, even though it uses action points as a movement or something which nullifies your ability to be upgraded or reinforced. So um, I thought we could double swap him out. If he had points remaining, he would actually still have been elig eligible for um, reinforcement. So the, the same situation is here uh, with this the Marines. I can move them to Luxembourg. I might as well, so that next turn they can be uh, upgraded. So just gonna move them. Uh, but then he has to. Maybe I won't upgrade them because they could take this mine, which is a fair amount of points. But then I guess. The sooner they do that, if they do that, they lose all their entrenchment and they're just dead. I think it's going to be an interesting test. Let's see if they decide to move out and take this mine. If they don't, I upgrade my marines. If they do, I just kill them. And then I upgrade my marines the next turn. Uh, similarly, I want to reinforce a unit at 8 and upgrade the units at 9 and 10. So essentially, we're not really going to be doing any attacks this turn. Uh, mostly, we're just interested in supply. Look at the supply! My best Todd impression. So I'm going to be okay with the five, although... Oh, wait, can we just... Oh, no, no, this is better. Let's just do this. <laughs> we'll do that instead. So we're just all about healing the... Heal the world. This guy can move forward in here. That's going to be plenty of supply. And this unit can move forward here. I guess that's also fine. Keep the push going. And I need this unit, these units, the, the HQ here is going to project supply over here, this direction, this turn at least. This unit is going to cover it for next turn, in which case the Le Mans will probably move out. So right now it's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6... Um, so this is at a 6. If I move him here, he's at a 5. If I move him here, he's at a 5. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. But here he's at a 5 as well. The problem is I, these guys are going to be really out of supply if I don't stay northwest of Tour. So we'll have to leave him there. Okay, so let's just do that. Uh, don't need to cut this guy off completely. Might even be better off moving this guy into position to attack the Colonial Corps next turn. Because I don't think that this 11 can do anything. It, it may try to break out, but it's, it's basically dead. Uh, and those are mountains, so if it moves in there, I don't even know if it can attack. But I'm going to stay here, just because I think the chances of this guy trying to move versus this guy moving are... Like, there's no reason for him to move. <laughs> He'll probably try to reinforce a little bit. And we also have some units we can upgrade over here. I think we'll do an upgrade on this one. And anybody else? 
think that's good for the French front. I would consider that... Oh, and by the way, at some point, before we had infantry weapons even, we did make the airship development. And I don't think we need anything from this airship, so we might as well do a nice quick upgrade. Especially while he's waiting for the Cherbourg supply to continue to increase. It looks like... 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. How is he getting supply there? Oh, the supply is from the port. That's right. So we have support, uh, the supply from the port. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, we'll take it. I, I need, I would prefer better than supply of five. And we'll probably look at the Navy stuff later. Okay, this is a no-brainer. <laughs> Despite it being a no-brainer, I won't do it. I did not look at the Navy stuff yet, so... Wow, Western Front looking pretty good. Which is how how it looked at the beginning of this turn. We're just continuing the steamroll, and we really are closing in on the French capital. I don't think there's anything we really need to do along the Italian border. Mainly, we just want everyone entrenched, which they are. And Except for this one unit, who will move here and then entrench... Entrenched like this. Could have moved him here as well. Maybe we'll put another Austro Hungarian detachment up there eventually, or here. I think here might be better than this. Uh, better guards the road. Although, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what's best. Well, we do want a unit right here. We're going to have to redeploy some units, but I need to start looking at that. So let me figure out what else I want to cover. Well, welcome to the Eastern Front, where I think it's going to be pretty quiet. Um, considering the Russians are have laid off a little bit, this strikes me as a really good time to just upgrade a lot of units here. Um, again, you can't upgrade if you're on the front, or, well, you can upgrade if you're on the front, just as long as you're not in enemy zone of control. So a lot of the units in this whole pocket area won't be upgraded until we solve this pocket problem. Um, okay, so let's start down here. I think we're mostly going to be staying where we are, except for the one thing I can try to get a little bit of... Uh-oh. Well, that didn't work. Um, I think it still did some damage, but it's good to know that they do have interceptors here. So it did one damage to us. I think we still ended up doing a little bit of morale damage. It didn't really need to. I mean, I just want to take advantage of 1 to 3 when I see 1 to 3, which ends up being a 2 to 4. That's fine. This is a 1 to 4. This is being a 2 to 3. <laughs> you don't want a game. Good lord, that's that's pretty bad. Oh well. Um, I'm so <laughs> I think we'll be okay. I think. <laughs> I might even swap these two units. And get this guy to entrench. <laughs> Because that was bad. That was very bad. Okay, um, we'll ignore that that ever happened. Let's move on to the good stuff. So, the pocket. How do we want to deal with this? Well, one to two. This is a one to four, so I want to take that. Okay, end up being a two to five. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, honestly. I think we should swap these two units and let this unit do an attack. One to two, I'll take it. End up being one to one. All right, I'm starting to get a little bit concerning. The number of, okay, zero two end up being a zero one. How far ahead are they on the Russian front as far as bad die rolls so far? Pretty far ahead. We got this guy down to a three. I guess we can still do some attacks. Amazing, another, another, uh -huh. Well, we can use our interceptor to weaken this guy a little bit. Then we can bombard him. Nine, down to 37. Don't think we need to do more than that. We'll take our one to three, which ends up being one to four. Finally, one little tick in the right direction, and nobody else can participate because they all used up themselves against a unit which is not going to die. Uh, otherwise, like I said, um, we want to reinforce where we can reinforce because, ooh, no, never mind. 0 and 4, which ended up being an 0 and 3, of course, of course, of course, 0 and 5, which ended up being an 0 and 4. Come on. Um, 
Let's swap these two. One, three. Come on, for love God. And we can move. <gasps> can this unit reinforce now? It can! Oh my. Well, shoot, I think we'll take that. The reason why is I'm going to have this unit move in. Because I don't suspect that they're going to be able to do anything. This unit has three supply. And I don't think it's... Yeah, there's no way it's going to get more than three supply. Because Lublin is a five. It's in white. The letters. So it's never going to be more than a five. And... This is always going to take two movement points to get in because it's a forest. So this will be at a supply of three no matter what, which means he'll have three action points, which means his first movement is going to take... I don't even think he can do it. It takes two movement points and then a plus one more because of the zone of control. So it's going to take all three action points to move either here or here. I don't know why he would do that to leave his entrenchment. So we won't have to worry about him attacking Tarnow, Krakow. He won't be able to break out is what I'm saying. So all this was... Supposedly not a bad, <laughs> supposedly not a bad move. I don't think there's anybody we, I don't even think we want to move in any further. And there's probably no other attacks we want to do, but we will take Radom. This is just one more supply point, one more source of points in our favor. Now the two areas we want, that are going to be supplying the enemy are going to be this fort and then Lublin. So once we take Lublin, although Siedlitz will recover slowly, I think. I'm going to push off this front, because I don't really care about these units. Let me un oh, can't undo it. Darn it. I wanted to see, just before I left, I wanted to see what kind of ratio we were getting over there, but probably going to do this, and then, let's see, what are we getting? 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 3. I do want to attack Seattle's just to keep the supply low. So we'll just do it. Okay, it ended up being 03. Fortune favors me suddenly. Let's take this one to three as well. One to four. Ah, they're trying to win back my good graces. We have to acknowledge it. The luck has favored us now. And I think that this one will do one this and then move up. And move this headquarters up a little bit. So let's see how supply is now. That's how I calculated it would be best. This is the maximum distance away we can go as you can see this was a seven this turn but that was here and now here it'll be a six which means it'll boost up to a ten which means a little bit of extra supply trickling in a nine for this guy an eight a seven a six for this guy from the um, austro-hungarian and this guy gets a five from both this hq and um i think this is still lindenberg and Ludendorff. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Um, that's, I think this is a really successful turn. And actually, what I'm going to do is split the episode here. So we've done our Russian turn. There might be little things here and there to do. So next episode, I will be doing uh, any kind of fixing up that we want to do, at least deploying one more unit on the Italian front. And then we'll be looking at the Ottomans against the Russians, maybe redeploying, and then all the Navy needs a look. And we don't need to do anything near Gaza, though, because we've already moved there. So, kind of a scattered turn, but I'm, I'm actually just running on fumes. It's really late, and I'm trying to <laughs> take the easy options, which for me are these... It was pretty obvious how to, how to close the gap here. So, so that's it. Until the next video, thanks for watching, and take care.